Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So, uh, you know what? Today I want to talk about, like, for me, at least in my wardrobe, like, why I don't aspire to shop on the new market. I have two current bag collection videos up. Overwhelming majority. No, literally everything on the shelf behind me, I purchased on the pre-love market. Now, of course, people shop on the pre-love market for any number of reasons. Chief among them is the price difference between buying new and buying resale. That obviously, pricing, yes, of course, is a factor in that, but there are a couple of other reasons why, like, I think the pre-love market is just better for me personally. And I do think it's a shame that a lot of people do tend to snooze on this market or only focus on one aspect of it. So today we're going to talk about other reasons why um, I shop in the pre-love market exclusively and why I don't think that I have any sites at all actually on shopping brand new, having a sales associate, like being sold to, etc. So um, let's get into it. I would love to hear your thoughts uh, in the comment section down below. Um, and let's get started. So number one, so I've come to the realization that I've spent more of my time hating the new releases than I have liking them. I think the last year of me being excited about uh, a new collection was, I'm gonna say 2016. Here we are sitting in 2023, like it's been years, like I don't even look on the websites for the new releases anymore. The direction basically that fashion has taken over the past couple of years has just been a complete like non-starter for me. All of the like bum bags and the fanny packs and the dad sandals, it's just not my style and it just doesn't resonate with me and I'm and I frankly like I'm over trying to make fetch happen for myself. I find more unique pieces. I find from I find items from collections past and things that didn't necessarily get like a, a, a foothold in like the popular lexicon, I guess. If you watch my collection video, most of my bags that are not vintage span specifically from three years. That is 2013 through like 2016 or 17. And I think that's just really, really interesting. Someone should do like a case study on me. I have the privilege, I suppose, of like living in a in a metropolitan area, so I have access to uh, different boutiques. Here in Miami, um, there are probably like, if you think about a brand like Louis Vuitton or Chanel, for example, there are probably like three, anywhere from like three to five places I can go and shop those specific brands. I walk into the boutiques and you go from one boutique to the next boutique and you like the same bag, you see it like basically 20 times over every time that you walk into a store, you're seeing the same items and it gets very repetitive. On the other hand, when you walk into a resale boutique, there is literally no telling what you will find when you get there. Um, I really do like to fixate on things that are a lot more unique and like more obscure generally. Um, I don't like wearing the same thing that everyone else is wearing and that's something I definitely do encourage, uh, not just for my, for my own personal taste but for you guys as well because that's where the deals are, that's kind of like what is more fun and makes this industry and this niche like more unique and interesting. Shopping the way that I shop and the style and the way that and the style that I have and the, and the things and the types of things that I'm drawn to doesn't really lean itself to like mall shopping. I mean, once you've pretty much once you've seen one, you've seen them all. And I just don't really find any like anything really like interesting or compelling about it. Even honestly, when you walk into the fast fashion brand, like you're not walking into this into Forever 21 and seeing that necessarily the same things in this store as you're going to see in that one. As I'm sure we are aware, the quality of a lot of the big brands, most of the big brands today, is garbage. Um, that's it. <laughs> Even a Louis Vuitton canvas bag that was made in like, I don't know, 2015 versus what, what they are, you know, allowing to pass through quality control today. The difference is staggering. Um, the prices have al almost doubled in, in certain cases. Um, I think one of the worst offenders currently is Chanel and, um, I just don't like the quality definitely is not worth it when it comes to like paying at full retail price like if I were paying more to be getting something that is better that is an argument that would make sense you got to give me some, like if you're gonna charge more you got to give me something better and they have shown no indications that that is um, even a minute interest to them so pass 
The treatment that sometimes, you know, the sales associates dole out in the designer boutiques, um, it is re world renowned to not being the best. But on the other hand, a, a similar work at work experience in that like when you have like a boss, when you have like management, when you have like incentives, when you have quotas that you're supposed to fill and, and all kinds of stuff like that, um, I do feel for some of these sales associates in that they can't they're not really given space to extend a lot of time to um, people who aren't going to walk in there and just spend tens of thousands of dollars multiple uh, multiple times throughout the quarter. Realistically, I, I will probably never be that customer. Theoretically, if I were shopping new in the boutique, I would only do that two to three times a year at maximum. I'm not going to be able to really like get the attention of a sales associate the way I would need to in order to like in order to basically like shop with them and get the types of things that I would like personally like I would rather just take the energy and find the items myself okay so one little this isn't so big of a secret but like clienteling is, is a thing that people are supposed to do you're supposed to like go into your little book and uh, of all your customers and like call up the people and see like oh if they're looking for something or show them like I don't know about you guys, but I hate being sold to like that. Don't just call me because you need to make a sale. You know what I mean? I feel like people can see through it. So that's just, that was never a strategy that I preferred to use. Um, it's kind of like a style or a strategy thing and it works, it works for some, it does not work for others. That kind of thing does not work for me at all. Yeah, like I said, I would like, if I truly do want something and it's going to be expensive to this level, like I feel so much more fulfilled finding it for myself scouring you know through the 11th page of ebay at four o'clock in the morning like that's me that's my lane that's what i like for me the hunt is totally part of it and like offloading the hunt to someone else like that's no fun i don't envision that i would be spending enough like specifically on luxury goods or even at one particular brand to really warrant the type of attention that like people tend to want to experience when they're shopping in a boutique. It takes me time to decide to purchase something. And this is gonna be true no matter how much money I have because these are still things that take up space in my life. I do not envision a world where I see something for the first time and just like drop like four grand on it without thinking about it, considering it, planning outfits out in my head, understanding like how it's gonna fit into my lifestyle, etc. And like that entire process at minimum is gonna take at least a couple of days. It took me two years to see this, decide that I wanted it, save up for it, and complete complete the purchase. It's going to take me time and I don't like feeling like that I'm being rushed into making a decision. I don't like to put myself in settings where that is going to be the case. And I don't know that I would be necessarily susceptible to being pressured into it from a sales associate, but I can't imagine that that would be an enjoyable experience for me, knowing that like, if I don't purchase this and this person's gonna feel like they failed, I, it seems really stressful and really chaotic. So maybe this is just uh, me being a terrible millennial, but I would much prefer to like sit and stew over it and just have like the window open on my laptop and you know, just read reviews incessantly and talk to my friends about it and do that whole thing kind of like in the privacy and comfort of my own solitude rather than going out into like the public and having to like use someone's time and labor. And most of the time, I'll ultimately decide not to purchase it. And it's like, how many times do you have to go through that song and dance and not purchase for this person to not be annoyed when you walk into the door? So one note to people who are in sales, it is very rare that the deciding factor is the salesperson. <laughs> Like there are things that exist like outside of your sphere of, of power that go into whether or not a person completes a transaction. Maybe they just got a bonus at work. Maybe they just got a new job. Maybe they have a party to go to. None of that has anything to do with whether or not you offered them a bottle of water. You know what I mean? I don't know how you guys are gonna feel about this, but on the resale pre-loved market, um, Generally speaking, with very few exceptions, um, purchases are final sales. So that kind of like puts stakes into like whether or not you take something home with you. you. You guys are probably gonna throw tomatoes at me when I say this, but I think that the fact that returns are common and accepted 
um, at some of the larger boutiques. That is less true once you go into like the standalone, um, standalone designer stores. Like you don't have to commit to the purchase necessarily in quite the same way. The fact that there is kind of an escape hatch, it would inadvertently make it so that I would end up spending more because I think, oh, I'll just return it if I don't like it. And then I inevitably don't. When I'm buying on the pre-loaf market, pretty much I know that's it. Spent the money, yeah, you can resell it, etc. But basically what I'm saying is that like, there's a level of commitment I feel to a purchase when returns are not accepted. And I think that, and I think that, that is probably a, a little bit healthier. That's gonna be an unpopular opinion. I'm 100% certain. The in-store experience to me just does not look particularly fun or luxurious to be very honest nowadays of course they're like they're you know make people stand in lines and make appointments and all all of that like that is absurd and i 100 percent refuse to do it like even before that and even outside of that like i don't like when i walk into places and i'm like being fawned over it makes me very uncomfortable i don't like it like leave me alone like just just if i need your, if i need help i will ask for it oh my god and the worst and the worst is when you do like try something on and they're just like gushing about oh you look so beautiful in that like leave me alone leave me alone so i will say that even on the resale market like the pre-love market there is somewhat less of that somewhat because you know ultimately they have they have what's in stock and like they don't have another one in the back they don't have another size uh for, for, for the most part so there is like a degree less of like that type of still associating interaction that i think i'm 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 completely good on does anyone else is anyone else made uncomfortable by that please tell me it's not just me and my anxiety Okay, so ultimately I think that with the price increases and just the way that the luxury boutiques and the brands are going, this is a very amicable breakup because they don't want my ass either. Um, I think it's been made inescapably clear that they are not vying for the attention or dollars of people who are only going to buy possibly like two to three bags a year. Um, they just want to focus on like... I don't know, billionaires and rappers, <laughs> yes. I am pretty comfortable with saying that I may never buy a new bag from a boutique. Maybe I'll go back to the outlets and find something cool one day, but as far as like shopping spree at Ball Harbor, I, I, don't, I don't really see that for myself. It just doesn't, does not seem like it's all it's cracked up to be, if I'm being honest, so. Let me know your thoughts are down below. How does your collection, like your ratio of pre-loved to purchase new, what is it? I'm dying to know. Uh, comment that down below and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.